Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Let's Talk Marriage. This is Pastor Larry coming to you this Wednesday afternoon with Let's Talk Marriage. All right, all right, all right. We're going to get right on into our program on this afternoon. All right. If you woke up this morning, you are doing well. All right, we're going to get right on to our program. Our program today is focusing on the marriage. All right. Uh, What the Bible's design for marriage. The Bible's design for marriage. All right. It it seems to be underrated now because uh, people, uh, we've mentioned this uh, on the show several times, how people tend to uh, fantasize about marriage. They think it's a fantasy and uh, happily ever after and things like that that they see in the movies. And uh, they tend to uh, have an unrealistic view about marriage. And uh, we've always said on this program that marriage is not hard. What we should be doing is enjoying each other as a married couple we should be enjoying each other and not making it harder than it actually is because it's not really hard we make things hard just like being a christian it's not hard we make it hard the same thing with a marriage we we make that hard first of all god created marriage as a loyal loyal partnership between uh, one man and one woman. It's a loyal, loyal partnership between man and woman. And uh, with that partnership comes, it, it, you're a team. It's not an I, you're a team. There's no I in the word team because there's two of you that becomes one. So it's no uh, little eyes and big me or big me and little eye, <laughs> however that goes. It, it's, it's not like that. It, it, it's it's, it's an institution that you should be working together, loving each other, and enjoying each other. We've always said that many times on the program. Enjoy each other's company. Especially you young people, when you first get married... Uh, Enjoy it when you first get married and it'll carry on for years and and it's something to grow on in your marriage. Because a lot of times we uh, have disagreements in the marriage. We talked about those uh, over the last week. We talked about disagreements. Uh, We talked a little bit about uh, intimacy and things like that. And we uh, one of the programs we talked about keeping it hot in the marriage. Uh, these are the things that help keep your marriage growing, help keeps it going, helps keep things alive in your marriage. And the same thing, uh, the same thing applies if you're a Christian. You can't let your fire burn out. You have to keep it. Yeah, that's why we are supposed to attend church to keep everything uh, going in our lives as far as being closer to Christ. And in order to be closer to your spouse, you have to keep everything going. You have to keep it moving. And you have to, and what, first of all, uh, foremost, you should be enjoying yourself. Marriage is a foundation built uh, to build a family. That's what uh, marriage is, is a foundation to build a family. And, you know, and family is sort of unrated nowadays, too. Uh, uh, The only thing you hear of nowadays or you hear a lot of is, uh, broken homes, uh, homes of single parents, uh, whether it be a single father or a single mother parent. It, it's not, uh, society is not catered toward the family, uh, a full family, you know, and it's very rare, uh, especially when you're coming up. I know when I was coming up uh, in the neighborhood that I uh, came up in, uh, grew up in, uh, I can count on my hand the number of actual uh, full families or complete families, you know, with the mother and father in the home. I could count on my hand the number number of, of my friends that 
had a mother and father figure in the home. Uh, I was raised by a single parent myself. And most of the, the of the people that it that was in my neighborhood, that's that that's what we were used to. We were used to uh, seeing the single uh, mother. It was never a single. We didn't hardly, you barely seldom saw a uh, single father. Uh, but it was always a single mother uh, that were raising uh, two, three, four, five, even six, seven kids uh, in the uh, projects that I uh, grew up in. In uh, you know, in you know, when we sat down and watched TV, and uh, during that time, I think it was the Brady Bunch that was <laughs> pretty popular, uh, where they took uh, two families and blended it, uh, blended together. I guess I think uh, the parents, the original parents, had passed or something, and they uh, blended uh, two families together. Man, we grew up seeing that. And then a lot of our sitcoms that we watch, uh, as uh, Afri especially as African Americans, even the sitcoms that we watch, most of them did not have a uh, complete family in it, uh, especially during the 70s. But then they, uh, at first, they, you know, when, when we grew up watching Good Times, there was a, a father figure in the home. But the father, even with the father figure in the home, they uh, seemed to always struggle. <laughs> good times. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't really good times. They, they were uh, like the songs that they were scratching and surviving. And they had a father figure in the home, and it seemed like he could never get ahead. Uh, you know, he was. Uh, I believe he was uneducated, and he was always trying to get the third rate jobs and, and you know and she did a little housework on the side and you know they would never uh, until the last show and after they <laughs> got rid of the father uh they seemed to uh get ahead uh so it it, it we grew up on uh, things like that and then you know they came along with the jeffersons they had a complete family uh, you know, and later on in the 80s, they came out with some shows that had complete families in it. But for the most part, we grew up uh, with just the uh, single parent. And, you know, so family marriage is a foundation to build a complete family. Uh, so what we have to do in our marriages is focus on the strengths of your spouse and not the weakness, weaknesses. Because, you know, like it's real easy to look at someone's faults or look at something that they don't do right rather than to look at what they what their strengths are and you know everyone has a, a area that they're strong in everyone has an area that they're weak in and uh, as a spouse as husband and wives we should look at our spouse strong points and not always bringing up the uh, the weaknesses that they might have or, you know, when you, as soon as you get in an argument, you make it worse than it is by bringing up the weaknesses. Those are things that we should not do. And it was, if we get caught in that, uh, don't be too proud to uh, apologize, you know, because, you know, sometimes when you in an argument or when you have a disagreement and you might say something, you, you know, off the top of your uh off the top of your head so it's always uh, good to have a discussion when you're not don't try to have a discussion we've said this several times on the uh, program don't have a discussion when you're in the middle of a, a disagreement wait till everything calms down then discuss certain subjects you don't bring up subjects in the middle of a uh, disagreement because then it escalates okay uh, here's another one uh, we uh, kind of overlook in a marriage and we've been talking about that lately. God designed sexual expression to help uh, married couples build intimacy. So it's, it, again, it's a part of intimacy and it's uh, designed by God because uh, uh, the bed is undefiled. So you should be enjoying each other. And that's a, a, one of the main parts of being married so you're able to enjoy each other uh doing courtship and in, in the time for intimacy you should be enjoying yourself uh marriage uh mirrors god's covenant uh 
relationship with us, uh, God's uh, covenant with us, uh, marriage uh, mirrors that, you know, uh, God's covenant with our people. That's why the Bible compares uh, marriage to the church or Christ compared uh, the church to uh, married. Uh, because, you know, uh, when you leave the church or when you stop be, uh, being a believer, you are considered a backslider, which you are separating yourself from God. And in a marriage, when you're uh, having issues and you're separating yourself from your wife, you, you go through things and you have uh, situations. And uh, so that's why we should uh, promote each other, encourage each other. And we've said that many, many times on the program, how we should be encouraging each other and not looking at, again, not looking at the faults or the weaknesses of your uh, spouse uh, and stop bringing up old stuff. People like to bring up old stuff, and yeah, we've all been guilty of it. So, <laughs> the ones that try to pretend that they're, oh, I'm perfect. I don't do that. You know, this is, yeah, I always say marriage is not easy, but there's no such thing as a, again, there's no such thing as a perfect marriage. You live and you learn and you grow as you grow. And you know what? Uh, and some people, uh, have a thing about saying, oh, you don't fall in love because when you fall, you don't know where you're landing. Uh, my theory on that is uh, just like a child, you have to fall before you walk. So uh, the period that you fall and have your faults is the time that you fall in love and you and you see uh, how because so when you fall in love, you're fantasizing everything. So. Uh, then when you get into the realistic part of marriage, that's when you begin to walk in love. So you fall in love and then as you grow in love, you begin to walk in love. And uh, that's how you stay uh, close to each other. And make sure you have, a, again, we've said it many times on the program, make sure you are, a ten I can't stress this enough, especially nowadays with the uh, social media, a lot of people stay at home because they want to. But then again, uh, I've seen several churches on Sunday morning uh, on my way to church uh, that their parking lot is pretty full, you know. So there, there are some people that are still attending church physically. But for one, one thing, uh, attending church physically with your spouse, make sure you are attending with your spouse. I can't stress that enough because that completes your family. And again, we well, I, I just men mentioned how uh, family is so underrated. Is it's, it's so used to seeing just the mother, uh, just the mother with their kids. You know, you know, even if you work a lot, take one day where you do something as a family, and that something should be you should be attending church. With your family uh, again, you know, your kids see you doing staying home. Then they grow up; they're gonna do the same thing. So we have to make sure that we attend church with our spouse, and that helps build a family as well. And that helps build a bond between the mother and daughter, between the father and son. Uh, they because they want to see dad in church uh, worshiping God. You know that's that's very important. You know I didn't have a. a father figure coming up uh, you know and especially in my home because like i said uh, my mother was a single parent but when i went to church as a kid i i would see my i would look at my grandfather how he uh, made sure everyone in the household went to church made sure he was right there with my grandmother and you know that's what uh, i modeled my life after uh, my grandfather he was one of the people that uh, was a strong far father figure, even though I didn't have one in the ho in my direct home. He was our uh, father figure for the uh, whole family, because uh, most of our my cousins they we all grew up with uh, in within single family homes. If I can think about it, yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, most of us uh, all grew up with single uh, parents, so we all looked to. Uh, my grandfather, because he was a very strong father figure, he was a very good example of how a husband should treat his wife. And, you know, I kind of modeled after him uh, when I got married. 
it, it took trial and error, but you know, I uh, kind of model after him uh, how he, because uh, he and my grandmother were married uh, over 60 years, so uh, they had a strong relationship. So there was the there was a father. Find a father figure in your life, uh, especially young couples, uh, or find someone that you can mentor as you grow in your marriage. So that way, uh, after you fall in love, you want to. Uh, elevate to walking in love and because when you walk in love you you're taking it to the next level and you both can grow together okay pray for your spouse instead of gossiping about them <laughs> you know sometimes uh, some uh, women uh, whenever their husband mess up they get on the phone and call their friends and tell everybody how he messed up and he can't do nothing right and you know and he can't keep a job and you know even if he you know if he does have a problem keeping a job it's your job to encourage him because sometimes you don't know what uh, a lot of uh, especially african american men what they might go through on these jobs because you know uh, they look at them in if they're at the same level as other people they're considered not achieving so they have to be overachievers on most of the jobs that they're on it in order to get ahead so we have to make sure that as as wives you have to make sure you encourage your husband instead of criticizing him don't you know talk to your friends about your husband saying negative things to them he's uh he should be uh, uh he should sound perfect <laughs> to your friends and family your husband, you know, and unless there's physical abuse, if there's physical abuse, you need to tell someone. But as long as there's not physical abuse, he's there. Uh, he's there trying, uh, you know, make sure you his main supporter. Uh, make sure you're lifting him up and, you know, and because, again, that family, a full family, especially in this generation or in this day and age, is so, uh, so scarce. Uh, to find that even, you know, as I was coming up, like I said, it was hard to find it. And it's even worse now to find a full family. So make sure that we are there for your husband supporting him. Uh, as far as anybody else know, he can't do nothing wrong. <laughs> if you have any issues, you know, if you have uh, having problems with, with your husband, make sure that you uh, seek counseling to work those things out. And make sure, again, we've said several times on the program, make sure we close those chapters, those un, uh, unending chapters in our lives before we walk down the aisle. Because you don't want to bring any uh, baggage. You have to leave those baggage at the baggage at the baggage claim. Claim your baggage and unpack it. Because you know, a lot of times we carry around baggage to uh what full of stuff in it that you haven't gotten rid of you have to get rid of all that baggage and don't carry it to another and uh, into a uh, relationship because it's going to come back to haunt you and you're going to be expecting your spouse to either be like the person before or not be like the person before or you're going to be comparing him to someone you knew in your past which is not right you need to close those chapters get that person out of your mind uh, because let's face it, uh, most of the people, uh, you know, you strive to do that. But most of the people, when they get married, uh, they, they've either been in a relationship or were married before. Uh, so we have to make sure that we close those chapters, especially if you come out of a bad relationship or a bad marriage. Make sure you close those chapters. I'm telling you because uh, you can bring that baggage over into a new marriage. Uh, again, pray for your spouse instead of gossiping about him. All right. Uh, we're going to be signing off in a minute here, but I'm going to go over the last one. Uh, learn, live what Christ teaches about relationships to and loving others. Learn what Christ teaches about relationships and how we should uh, treat each other. And you can never go wrong. And again, God created marriage as a loyal partnership 
between a man and a woman. Uh, this is Pastor Larry. I'm going to be signing off. Uh, remember, if you have any questions, just list them on our uh, on our site. Oh, there's a thing. Uh, list it on our site, and we will address it. If, or if you would like to hear a, a specific topic uh, that you want to want us to discuss on the program, make sure you jot that topic down. We'll do a little research on it, and, and we'll present it. Uh, on one of our programs. This is Pastor Larry. I'm going to be signing off until we meet again with Let's Talk Marriage. All right. Now, remember all the music that you hear is from a great app called Root Triggers Plus. You can find it on the Android platform as well as the Apple platform. This is Pastor Larry. Until we meet again with Let's Talk Marriage.